Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to uh, a new chapter, another chapter at Sweetwater. I appreciate you all coming today, and it's a pretty exciting day. Uh, one of the oldest instruments in the world, of course, is the, is the piano. And uh, when I started the company 32 years ago, or way back in 1975, I never thought that I'd have the opportunity to, to uh, offer grand pianos to the people in Fort Wayne in this region. And, uh, it's quite a day that's come. Great. Uh, we're going to see some very state-of-the-art uh, technology, and it's probably even a little more complicated that I could explain. So I'm going to ask the Yamaha representative, Craig Knudsen, to come up and explain a little more detail. Thanks, Chuck. Well, very excited to be able to talk a little bit about the technology itself. Um, as Chuck mentioned, the acoustic piano has been around for many years, about 300 years to be exact. And the technology has not changed too much in those 300 years. It was about 100 years ago that a technology became very popular and, in fact, uh, you could argue inspired a whole nation, and that was the player piano, reproducing pianos. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but player pianos uh, really were how popular music was distributed in the United States. How did people know the, the words to Ain't She Sweet? This is before radio. It was player pianos. You could find them in every theater, every salon, every saloon. And in fact, in customers' homes, in 1925, this technology became so popular that they sold more player pianos in 1925 than they did acoustic pianos. All right? um, there was also a musician who was inspired uh, by this technology. His name was George Gershwin. He learned to play the piano by putting his fingers where the keys were moving on a friend's player piano. I've got a little surprise for you, a little bit of technology. We've got an Apple store right here among the Yamahas. I've got an Apple iPad here uh, that uh, I'm going to press play. We converted at Yamaha a piano roll of George Gershwin himself playing Rhapsody in Blue. So at this point, when you see a key move or a pedal move, it's George Gershwin. argue that that's a, uh, a transference in time. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're now going to do a transference in place. Uh, you already know that we have a musician sitting on a piano in Los Angeles right now. Uh, he didn't get on a plane to perform. He is actually going to perform for you live. Every key that moves is Mike playing this key. Every pedal that moves is Mike playing this key in California. So let me get on with the official uh, introduction of Mike Garson. He has played with the great jazz musicians of the last century, including Stan Getz, Elvin Jones, Freddie Hubbard, and Stanley Clark. And as mentioned earlier, he's worked on and off with David Bowie since 1972. He's played with the LA, LA Philharmonic, composed concertos, sonatas, pop songs, and even composed and scored the movie Stigmata. He's worked with Nine Inch Nails and Smashing Pumpkins. And yet at the age of 15, he played with Mel Torme and later Nancy Wilson. He's a big fan of Art Tatum and Oscar Peterson and Bill Evans, and yet he loves Rubenstein and Horowitz. He's composed 4,600 pieces of music. And here's a quote from David Bowie himself. It's pointless to talk about Mike's ability as a pianist. He is exceptional. However, there are very few musicians, let alone pianists, who naturally understand the movement and free thinking necessary to hurl themselves into experimental and traditional areas of music, sometimes at the same time. Mike does this with such enthusiasm, it, it makes my heart glad just to be in the same room with him. Well, today, all of us will be in the same room with him. Everything is improvised. He's going to do a George Gershwin medley. Mike Garson. 